They are formerly named light emitting diodes, but just about everybody calls them LEDs, environmentally friendly lights that are turning up everywhere these days. David Begno visited a company that's come up with the creative use of this technology in architecture. Good morning, David. Good morning, Vanita. We are about to take you on a tour and show you how bright lights, good graphics, and animation are redefining big buildings with what is known as experience design. From the Empire State Building in New York City to landmarks around the world, LED lights have transformed big city skylines, bridges, and even corporate lobbies. This is what 221 Main Street, a San Francisco office building built in the 70s, used to look like. We thought we need to give this building a presence and we need to connect the inside of it with the outside of it. Look at it now. We did like a big simple idea which was like, well, let's literally put a ribbon of light on this thing. Let's put a big stream that starts on the front of the building that flows all the way down the ceiling, the exterior inside the building, and then it folds down the lobby wall. And that's like about 125 foot long. Ed Perver was tasked with turning what some say was a boring building into a conversation piece. He's a senior designer for the New York City-based ESI Design, which specializes in experience design driven by big ideas. He took us to 330 Hudson Street in Manhattan, where nine multi-resolution LED screens essentially put a view on a windowless building. And we created this time lapse that's spatially oriented. So if you're here in this lobby and you're looking, say, for example, I'm looking in this direction right now, what I see on the screen is exactly the same view I would have if that wall wasn't there. The work of ESI designers like Ed Perver was first inspired by Edwin Schlossberg, who founded ESI in 1977. Is it enough for you for somebody to walk by the building and say, oh, that's cool, or do you want them to stop and have a conversation? I think that my favorite thing is that they would elbow someone next to them and say, look at that, that's so cool. And then they would say, well, why, or whatever. And a lot of our designs are sort of thought about to being an invitation to move inside and get more. Schlossberg, who's the husband of Caroline Kennedy, was once quoted as saying, my art is what we might see if we could witness the process of thinking itself. One of the company's largest and most impressive design projects was this dream cube in Shanghai, built in 2010 for the World Expo. Then it was the largest 3D LED screen ever built. People clapping in the experience changed the, this gigantic LED outside. So the LED required the interaction of the human to activate the display? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The thing I, I thought would be really interesting is to show you some uh, of a building we did in Chicago. One of Schlossberg's lead designers, Maria Rizzolo and her team, came up with a map theme to highlight the building's presence in downtown Chicago. It's at a very interesting location just right along the Chicago River. So you can see it on the boat tours, but it just didn't have a presence. So we met Ed Perver in Chicago to see it for ourselves. The red dot is where the building is on the river. Absolutely right. So that red dot is positioning us. That's like a you are here moment. It's like this is where this building is. Prior to the map, the building wasn't much of a conversation piece. Now it's on the architectural tour that the city has. What does the map do for the building? I think the map gives it personality. I think it brings out the personality that was hidden within the building before. The redesign has been good for business, too. The transformation of this particular building has been a significant factor in bringing in more tenants. About a mile away at 180 North LaSalle Street in Chicago, ESI installed 13 projectors, which beam content from data on social media. The wind data from the internet informs how fast those clouds move and in what direction. So tomorrow, it looks like we're gonna have a strong westerly wind. So you can see that all around the lobby, the clouds are moving in the direction and with the speed that they will be tomorrow. Beacon Capital Partners, which owns these buildings, has hired ESI exclusively to redesign a total of nine buildings around the U.S. 177 Huntington Street in Boston is one of those buildings. It truly is interactive, so it's, it's basically functional artwork in my mind. Rob Albro is Beacon's senior vice president. We feel that the money we spent on these lobbies is well spent and our return um, is going to be phenomenal on these assets. Is it enough to just have a good looking fancy light display? No. 
not, I mean, that's sort of, e it's too easy. You want a real experience. Yeah, I want a real experience. I want people to be thinking about it while they're doing it. I want them to be looking at other people's reaction to what's happening while they're doing it, and to think about how it's a window into seeing and doing and being in, you know, after the experience. Now, ESI is not the first company to use LED lights to change the look of a building, but they have been a pioneer in redefining both audience engagement and experience design. David, it's so interesting to look at the thought process that goes into designing these lights, because it's not just lights, obviously. I mean, but, but it also looks kind of expensive, is it? It is. You know, Edwin Schlossberg said five years ago, a redesign of a building might have cost $20 million. He claims they can do it in a total project for about $1 million. It's so realistic, it makes me nervous that if I see one, I'm going to walk right into a wall. I mean, the depth that they are able to achieve to make it look like it's a cavernous room. Absolutely. And we're talking about buildings that in the past people walked by and didn't even notice. And now they're like, oh, 221 in San Francisco. Yeah, that building. Yeah, it's amazing. It totally transforms a building. Yeah. David Begnaud, thanks so much. You bet.